Hey guys, it's Chris. How you doing? I want to talk a little bit about I want to talk about people who are not getting the the freedom that they're looking for from fear, demonic attack, all this stuff, guys. And the problem is you guys are not saved yet. That's the problem. I have a lot of people I'm I'm I'm, I'm ministering to right now and I'm trying to help and I'm in a tough position because I don't want to go, I don't want to tell them you have to give this up, you have to do this and you have to do that. But I'm making this video because I'm telling you that if you want Jesus' help, you have to do these things I'm suggesting to you. You can't watch, you can't continue watching pornography and expect that one of your prayers is, is heard by Jesus. Because guys, until you're saved, until you completely submit to him, the only prayer he will hear is a broken prayer of of sacrifice where you say to him, I'm putting I'm done, I give up, I'm giving you my life. You 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 use me as you wish, use me as your, your vessel for your kingdom. I want to serve you. I love you. I know you're the only way and you have to Keep praying this until you feel him, you, your salvation. You can't just, um, you guys can't just watch my videos. I mean, I guess it's better that you watch them than not watch them, but you can't just watch the videos, learn what I'm teaching, and expect that because you've now learned what I'm teaching and you're, you have new views about demons and you're learning things about demons and how to stop them, that that watching me is going to stop the demon problem. I can't, I have no power aside from Christ. I have no power aside from Christ. And if you're comfortable in your sin and you love your sin, I have no power of Jesus Christ. Now, do I have power if you're uncomfortable and you hate your sin? Yes. When, when, when I've been, when I've walked near people or approached people that are, are ready for God, I've seen people break out into tears just by my presence because that's how it works, guys. But if, if say I'm ministering to you and we've been working together and I've been trying to help you and you're still doing the things that I told you you have to give up in order to be free of these demons, when, you actually, when I see you, there's going to be nothing I could do for you. Maybe I could do a deliverance on you. Maybe I'll be able to cast some demons out, the ones that you're actually, like say you're sick of lusting, or say you're sick of movies or video games or dirty or rock music, maybe I could do a deliverance and get those demons out. But if you are comfortable in your homosexuality, in your alcoholism, and you love that sin and you're unwilling to let go and your spirit isn't sick and tired of that sin destroying you, no one, I, I don't believe anyone on earth but Jesus Christ could, could help you of that problem. You need to acknowledge the sin, and you need to at least know it needs to go. You can't be a person that says, no, I'm not ready to stop drinking. Say you like to play video games, right? One, somebody I talk to every day plays video games all the time. And they play video games with demons. And I know this kid is seeking God, and, that, and, and I'm going gonna, gonna to keep working with them. But... He was involved in New Age stuff. He was involved in astral, project, in astral projecting in, in the company of witches, people doing spells on him. Now, this is the kind of stuff that I went through. Now, to get out of this kind of stuff, you can't just pick, a, pick something you want to stop. You need to completely turn to Christ. I mean, I'm not saying you have to do it today, but you should be praying for it, and you guys got to start reading your Bible, you know. You know, I don't cast people to the side that love Jesus. That is my main thing. You, if you love Jesus and you're still sinning, I am just going to stay in there forever with you. I'm not going to be like some of these other people that are like... You know, you're a sinner, you're of the devil, you're a child of the devil. I'm a firm believer that God draws people and calls people, and that if somebody's experiencing demonic problems and that their life is in the spirit realm, that God is protecting them from death.
Because usually, you never hear about this stuff, guys. Usually, when the devil goes to kill someone and, the de and demons are starting to manifest, a person dies and you never hear of them. Now, if someone's starting to experience demonic power enter the physical and they're experiencing being torn out of their body or astral projecting by accident and weird things are happening, the only one that's protecting you is Jesus, guys. The only one that's protecting you. Demons pulled me out of my body like, like someone pulls a rug out from under a table. Pulled my spirit out, ran off with it, and a force came and stopped them, and I slammed back into my body like a rubber band. It happened twice. Now, I know those demons didn't let me go just because of... My, my, my personality or my looks. They let me go because God stopped them. Because if they had a choice, if they have a soul in their claws, they're going to take it down to hell. They're not going to let it go unless something stops them. Now, why would God choose a sinner like me and a drug user and a drug dealer and, a, and, and an evil person and an astral projector using powers, using demonic powers? Why would God take someone like me and spare my life? It's because people really are chosen, guys. It's not, yes, you have free will. You have free will, but you were chosen to have that free will and use it the right way. You understand what I mean? You have a bottom line. You have a, God put, took some people and they have no choice. They have a bottom line. The path they take to get there, that is their free will. And however God does this, guys, this is not our business. Those who get into the, into the Calvinist argument, it's not our business. But my point I'm trying to make is, why would I cast aside a brother in Christ who knows Jesus as Lord, loves him, but is still under is still deluded by the devil just enough to hold on to a few sins, okay? But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to lead you away from those sins because not, just because I, I, I'm not casting someone to the side or telling someone you have to do this, it's still my job to be like, guys, you will get no freedom while you're playing video games with demons with fangs and claws because you're yielding to demons. You're yielding to Satan's um, trap for you. That's Satan's trap for you. Because while you're playing the game and you're watching the demons and shooting and blood's coming out, that is not of Christ. It's violence. It's a distraction from the Word of God. And guys, most of all, it bears no good fruit. It bears no good fruit. So, if you guys are getting pulled out of your body and I have other people that just can't seem to stop sinning. They, they, they talk to me like they're completely powerless against the sin. And, and they love Jesus and they believe in Jesus, but you guys are letting the devil walk all over you. You guys are letting the devil walk all over you. And some of you are chosen, but the ones that are called, called you have an option. When someone calls you on the phone, you could pick up the phone or not pick up the phone, or you could call them back another time. Now, guys, when you take the chance to call back another time, or when, it, when you don't pick up, you go to hell, okay? When you take a chance and say, oh, I'm not ready to let go of that right now, but, you know... Uh, you know, in a few years I'll give that up. You're called, but you may die before that. Christ may return bef before that. And that would make you one of those people that never got saved. Guys, if, if you're still comfortable in sin, you're not even saved yet. Even though you know Jesus is Lord, you haven't, ma you haven't made him the Lord of your life yet. You know Jesus is Savior, but he's not Lord to you yet. That's the thing. And until you, he says, those who love me will keep my commandments. And his commandments aren't the Ten Commandments. His commandments are many. They're many. They're scattered throughout the whole New Testament. You have to read the whole New Testament. The whole thing. And, and Jesus said, if you, commit, if you commit one of those sins, it's as bad as if you did them all knowingly. Not repentantly, but it, say you willingly are, 
are yielding to Satan or you're willingly fornicating and that's the one sin you want to hold on to, that's called a stronghold, guys. That's the devil's stronghold on you. So that's more important than all the other ones. Like for most people, it's smoking. They'll follow Christ, they'll read their Bible, they'll do everything, but they need to stick that cigarette in their mouth. And then you got some people that are even more tricky that want to stick an electric cigarette in their mouth, as if that's not a lust of the flesh. Anything you crave that's, that's in the material world, be it drugs, alcohol, electric cigarettes, laying on a couch, anything you crave that's not of the spirit is a lust of the flesh, guys. Just because you're not breathing that smoke in does not mean that you are not out of line if you want to be a righteous Christian, if you want to be a full-blown, if you want to be a Christian, guys. There is no halfway. I'm so sick of the halfway. I'm so sick of the halfway. Doing something out of ignorance is one thing. Doing it knowingly, you're not a Christian. Period. You're not saved yet. Guys, you, if, if, if you hear what I'm saying and you know you're doing a sin and that God does not like that sin and someone has pointed it out to you and you don't stop, look, I love you, but you are gambling. You are gam you're playing Russian roulette. That's what you're doing. You're taking the gun. You're spinning the chamber. There's one bullet in there. You're shooting. You're getting away with it. The next day goes by. You do it again. Pretend the gun has 100 rounds in it. You just got a little better odds. God's, God's giving you a shot. But guys, with, with what's going on in the spirit realm right now, with the demons saying we're in the judgment phase, with the demonic powers through the conjuring getting so potent in the air, and, and, and the end times, all the prophecies been fulfilled, why do you want to play Russian roulette? Why do you want to play Russian roulette and stay comfortable in your sin? You need to completely submit. You need the broken prayer. This is what's going to make you pray the broken prayer. Giving up the thing you love the most is what breaks you and brings you to Christ. Giving up things you really don't care about don't even count, guys. They don't even count. It's that thing that you say, well, this is my whole life. This is who I am right now. That's the thing. That's the thing that God needs from you. Because it needs to be full submission to Christ. Full submission, all or nothing. Because if you love him and you know he's the one that created all this, and if you know that he's the one that holds your tomorrows, and trust me guys, he holds your tomorrows. So if you know that he's the one that holds your tomorrows, why aren't you submitting to him? Don't play games with them, guys. Because when that prophecy is fulfilled and that day comes that the Father chose, it, chose for him to come back, the Father's not going to say, wait for that one to come into line unless you're chosen. If you're called, they're going to be like, all right, that one never made it. He's hewn down, like the Bible says. He, was ne he never made it. They pluck you from the vine. They, pull, they, they, they burn you. That's it. It's over. Don't. Don't do that. Guys, nobody should be comfortable in witchcraft. I've had maybe five people, all people that love Jesus, and uh, guys, so, I've had maybe 30 people tell me people are doing witchcraft on them. I'm only talking about five of them that talk to me about the witchcraft like it's a casual matter. Oh, I met this girl one time, or I met this guy, and they made me lay in a circle, and now I got... You know, now I got voices talking to me like it's some kind of joke, guys. Those voices start off as a joke. You'll, you'll have a demon go in your ear, you're an idiot. And you'll feel like you have a new friend if you're pathetic. But guess what, guys? That thing's trying to kill you. And that's why I say you're pathetic if you don't care about it. Because to, to have demons and to be demon-occupied and not do everything in your power to get them out is the dumbest thing in the world, guys. When I learned that demons were in my body by the Legion, I was... Guys, when I learned the truth of Satan in the spiritual world, I turned on a dime. And this is what true born-again believers, true chosen people do. When they learn of Jesus, it's like their first love, they turn around and they do not dance with those demons. You may dance with them in the battle, but you're not dancing with them outside of a battle. Some people are, are entertaining these demons. 
Some people are, are, are when the demon is, is in the room, they're trying to talk to the demon. They're trying to talk to the demon. You don't want to do that. You, you want to tell the demon, you, you, you want to rebuke it in Jesus' name, rebuke it, rebuke it, tell it to leave, tell it to leave. You don't want to say to it, well, what are you doing here? You don't want to try and open up a conversation there, guys. Big mistake. Big mistake, guys. They, they've deceived you if you've opened up lines of conversation with them. You should never say anything to them and expect an answer back unless you're trying to torture a demon in somebody else. If you're talking to your own demons, you should never expect an answer back and open up a conversation. Because you can, ex you can torture a demon in someone else, and if they're being tortured bad enough, you'll get good information out of them. 90% of it's a lie. You've got to know what the 10% is that's going to blow their kingdom up. I've had demons tell me things that are so valuable that, that, that I used in, in other deliverances and the demon didn't even know how I got the information. So don't go around thinking that everything out of a, out of a demon's mouth is a lie. Just 90% of it. Sometimes God makes them talk, okay? But the bottom line is, guys, you will never be free until that, until that broken prayer. Now... When you give up the thing you love the most, you're going to be tortured. And those demons are going to be inside of you telling you, go pick up that heroin, go pick up that cocaine, go pick up that alcohol, go masturbate, go play video games, go listen to rock music. And the thing they know you love the most, it is going to be torture to give it up. But guys, I promise you, if you fight that sin... God will take away the need for that away. It, deep down in the heart, it'll be gone. You won't need to play the video games. You won't need the drugs. If you fight the sin, he may heal you instantly if you really break down and really get the Holy Spirit. But sometimes you have to fight it. It may take three months. It will be brutal, guys. For me, to stop having sex completely was brutal. There were nights those demons came in in my dreams, tried to get me to lust. They tried to get me aroused. They tried, they, the demon of lust put lust into me, powered it into me, made it like, it, it felt like I was being burnt to, to not have sex. Honestly, it was brutal. And I fought it and fought it and fought it. And the demon was so powerful when it came in with that lust. And you guys got to just sit there like, a, like a, a holy person, guys. And eventually, that lust, when God sees that you, you, you hated it so much that you, you withstood a fallen angel, he'll take it away. Okay? So... Try quitting the thing you love the most if you know it's evil and hopefully it breaks you down to a broken state. When you hit that broken state, call for Jesus and that's when you're going to be saved, guys. And you have to stay the course, okay? So be blessed in Jesus' name and have a good night. And I pray that you have all the strength to fight the wiles of the devil because he knows your weakness, guys. That's why they call them familiar spirits. They're familiar with you. They've been living in you. They've been watching you. They know your weaknesses, and they will use them against you, guys. So watch out, okay? Good night. Be blessed.